All right, here's how we can edit drums in Easy Drummer, or from Easy Drummer, much easier. This is Logic Pro X, and it's asked me what I want to do, so I'm going to create an Easy Drummer track. Close this stuff here. All right, so now I have Easy Drummer. I'm not loaded into it yet. Um, I'll load up my kit just because I like the way it sounds more. And let's just pick. Um, A couple ways you can go about this. You can take the files, drag them down here. You can make a whole song um, in here, but there's very little editing that you can actually do within this file and in, in this screen. Um, you can remove certain things, you can quantize stuff, you can change the tempo, and you can pick a power hand and you pick your opening hand. This amount knob, I have not used this for anything useful yet. So you might be able to find something to do with that. I can't. Um, you can change the velocity of an individual drum, but that's going to affect it the whole time. So it's uh, it's kind of pointless. It's like a set it and forget it kind of thing when that's that's useless if you want an actual live drum track. That's one way you can go about it. What I prefer to do, let me take this out of there so it's not making excess noise. Um, you can take these files and drag them directly on your timeline into whatever DAW you're using. So once they're in there, you can go to your edit screen, and there are your drums. So say you want to add some more kicks. Now obviously you're going to have to adjust the velocities of these after the fact. And that's how you start editing your drums. You can because you can't slide any of these little dots around in Easy Drummer. You can't do any of that stuff, unfortunately. Um, but you can here, so that's one way to do it. Um, then when you're done with this, once you got all your fills in there, because like I said, you can you keep dragging stuff down. Um, it's also a lot easier to edit certain. So like some of these fills you might have are like you know you get like a two measure fill or something. Maybe the first half the measure is really cool. The second half the measure, it's not what you need at all. You can just chop half it off, throw it in there. Makes it a lot easier for editing. Um, the other thing to do, as far as getting these to sound more like real drums and getting more out of them, you have the mixer, which it gives you some options, obviously, to uh, play with stuff. But I don't like the reverb they have. And I don't like the compression they have. Ambience I use only because it's the sound of the room that they recorded it in and you get a more matched sound. So I'll usually leave some of the ambience in there, but even then I'll try to do something else. In, uh, here, I'll show you how I'm doing that. All right, um, so Easy Drummer automatically loads up for me. I'm sure there's a setting that I can do it. It doesn't do this, but automatically loads up as a stereo track. It only lets you adjust the overall level or add effects to the whole drum kit. But if you go to the multi out, let's see if this is gonna work right away. Nice work right away. Alright, let me go to the mix screen. So when I go do the model, it's cranked up there. Um so when I go to my mixer screen, this is my easy drummer track, and I have this little plus and minus. So this knows that it's getting all these outputs from that one plugin. These are going to be my, let's see, just because I know the way this goes at this point now. Snare, toms, actually that's probably the snare top, or snare bottom, and those are hats, toms, overheads, ambience. You go on the Easy Drummer, and down here in your mixer, these got to correlate with your auxiliary tracks in your DAW. So we've got the two. So I can adjust the overall levels in here. Oh, that wasn't snare track. It was something. So I labeled these wrong down here, but regardless, you get the idea. So 
So let's just say I'm going to work with the snare sound for a little bit. Crystal Algae has some outstanding plugins with Weaves. These obviously sound like shit because they're coming through my laptop speakers, but... I'm just doing little things like that. You can, you can really kind of start taking advantage of how much you can edit these drums so it doesn't always sound like a machine is playing them. Even with a... You know, I mean, I, I most of my MIDI files are like free MIDI files collected from the internet and stuff, so... The velocities aren't always... Um, where you'd like them to be they're 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 all over the place um so you can go in and really really get in there with the velocities edit them a little bit so it sounds a little more human randomize them um i even drag some of mine off the grid because there are very few drummers or musicians that play dead nuts on the grid the whole time it's crazy so i'll move stuff off the grid and uh, make it less perfect but um, yeah, this edit screen is spend a lot of time looking at this. Um, I'm not sure if I already said it, but you can export that MIDI file and put it back in the Easy Drummer if you wanted to. If you wanted to use that again, if you you know you got like a there's a few beats that I use all the time. They didn't have the MIDI files for um, like a simple halftime thing. that I could not find for the life of me an easy drummer so I just made one of my own I always have it when I go back to that an easy drummer if you got it synced up to the host it's gonna follow the uh, tempo that you're you got set already so say right now it's at 120 I can crank that way up and now it's gonna play this out so it's gonna follow the host whatever your host is set at and keep that in mind too, because you might be confused when you start pulling down. And you'll notice the um, it'll have the tempos down here, and this is where that um, oops, like the quantize change tempo in here. Some stuff it just it ends up working out really well if you find something that's right around um, what you're looking for, but you just want, you know, you just want to amp it up a little bit. You can double tempo, and even if, even if the tempos aren't perfectly matched, you can usually find something somewhere you want. If you just just stick with it, you'll, you'll find what you're getting for. <laughs> if not, just throw it in the editor and edit the hell out of everything, which is what I end up doing. A lot of my times, I'm us just using Easy Drummer in those MIDI files for fills, and I'll construct a whole uh, tune out of, you know, just starting off scratch and it, it, it it's time consuming and uh but you end up getting the what you want oh yeah it's got that other file in there too but anyway that's uh how i go about editing drums and doing all that fun stuff so I hope that helped, and if uh, I can answer any more questions or provide any information, then feel free to let me know. Bye-bye. Uh,